My name is Catherine Bruce. My name is Josh Phillips. And this, this is, is the, the Clinton, Clinton Arrow, Arrow Podcast. Podcast. So in the kitchen, there's always nicknames, but you kind of got to get to that point. So when they first meet you, what do they call y'all? Well, they call us Chef Bruce. And, and Chef, Chef Phillips, yeah. yeah. But after a while, I'm Mama B. Yep, and they call me Philly after a while. So, <laughs> um, But before we get going, kind of tell me, how long have you been with the Clinton Public School District? Uh, and then how long have you been teaching students in culinary arts? Uh, this is my sixth year to teach here at Clinton, and this is the first time I've taught. So diving in six years ago was my first time to actually teach. Uh, this is my third year at Clinton, and I'm entering my seventh year teaching. Okay. So, so um, how did you get into thinking that you wanted to do anything professionally in a kitchen. I'm sure you're seeing the same thing in some students, but how did you see that in your own life? Um, I was at Auburn University and was taking some hospitality management courses, and I just had this aha moment of this is what I want to do. I want to open my own bed and breakfast one day. Um, I'd like to learn more, and so I, from there I went and worked in as many different avenues of the industry as possible to get experience. Where all, where all did you go? Because I know you, you've kind of had a, a pretty interesting adventure around the southeast at the yeah, we both hopped around a lot in the industry <laughs> yeah. so i worked at the ritz carlton hotel for a while i worked for the charleston wine and food festival um, i worked in personal chefing catering um, restaurants a little bit dabbled in just all different areas so philly what about you where, where are you from because you're not from here and say it with the accent say it with the accent. i'm from massachusetts the boston area the boston boston <laughs> um how did you get into into thinking you wanted to do anything professionally in a kitchen I think the love of food started really young. Um, my grandmother and my mother were both excellent cooks and learned a lot from them. And that was kind of, I was, I was like most seniors, didn't know what we wanted to do with our lives. And food just kind of was natural for me. And so went and did that. So this is the, 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 the culinary aspect of our career and technical education department is, uh, has a long tradition. Y'all didn't start it, but when y'all got here, things kind of shifted. So when you first got here, uh, tell us a little bit about when you first got here and then the fun that we got to go through in coming into this new facility. Yes, so when I first started in 2019, um, we were at the junior high at the old CTE facility across town, and it was a 19... 40s, 50s, 60s. I don't know how. It was an old kitchen. It was, as the kids say, it was it was it was 1900s. It was 1900s. Yeah. It was a vintage <laughs> kitchen. Um, we had no dining room to serve from. We had uh, no. We didn't have a lot of people to actually serve other than the CTE people in the building. So we didn't have um, what we have now being here at the high school as far as. Um, customers so um, so uh, we moved over that year in the middle of COVID in 2020 to this new construction site and when we moved in the fall of 2020 we were in masks with construction people still everywhere with half our students here half at home I mean it was quite a transition boxes everywhere of all the kitchen supplies half the equipment working half still not plugged up so it was um, fall 2020 was was yeah, interesting. And it was rolling pretty well. So, I mean, you had a you had a large cohort that wanted to come in so much so that we we added Philly over here. So Philly from Boston. Tell us about how how did you get get involved and and want to come here? Um, well, I met Catherine at a training um, session. The end of my first year, we met, and um, I heard she was at Clinton, and I'm like, hey, I live in Clinton, and I was working in Vicksburg at the time, so I was commuting. I'm like, hey, if you ever leave or need someone else, hit me up. And we kind of stayed in touch a little bit, um, went over and visited the old facility, helped her with some of the equipment and stuff like that, and we just kind of kept up. And so when they needed a second teacher, she reached out to me, and I, I jumped on that. <laughs> I don't blame you. I've, I've enjoyed you being here. I, I, uh, I always laugh that I find any reason I can to come and take pictures over here, which is any reason at all. Um, but some of the things, t tell me a little bit about the accomplishments that you've seen from the students. They, they've grown from just knowing how to be uh, safe in a kitchen to actually being uh, serve safe certified and all that. So, so tell us, what are some of the accomplishments that you've seen from your students specifically? Well, uh, 
when we started off, Surf Safe Manager was the big test they had to pass, and that's a huge accomplishment. And I tell them every year that is their golden ticket into the industry. Um, you know, they're up against, when they get to college, they're up against thousands of other college students for, say, a serving or a waitressing job at a restaurant, and they walk in with that Surf Safe Manager certification. They are pretty much guaranteed a spot, and if not, uh, not just the spot, but probably more money because it's a legal requirement in the state of Mississippi yeah. to have someone on staff with that certification. So that's a huge deal. Um, but then secondly, I'm wildly competitive. And so when I found out there were culinary competitions, I was like, let's do it. Yeah. Let's dive in. So that was the beginning of all the, all the fun. There. But y'all kind of ba balance each other out, right? Because one of you loves baking and one of you doesn't necessarily love baking. Is that right? Am I somewhere around that? It's it's more like front of the house and back of the house. Okay. So like working with the public, I'm not a huge fan of that. I yeah, don't like I'm to. Not. I'm kind of am who I am, and it take it or leave it. That's kind of <laughs> how I've always been. I don't know. I guess that's the northern in me. Um, but Chef Bruce loves talking to people and networking and all that stuff. And so it's kind of been an awesome balance of the things that come naturally and she finds joy in. I don't, and vice versa. Like I would much rather be in the back of the house, making sure the food's coming out on time, making sure it's right. Um, Horse playing with the kids and just having a good time. That's that's where I find joy. That's good. And I guess you're going to see that in a in a um, in a kitchen anyway, or a restaurant. You'll find that. So you were talking about being competitive. So there's there's a few things, and, and you both have some of your your earned uh monograms on your on your your chef's jackets so we've got pro start we've got skills usa we've got mre competitions you've been to disney for the cook around the world tell us about how how you got involved in this and then how the students have performed there well the first year i had never even taken a local field trip <laughs> around town and i just said we're going to disney we're competing in this thing so there was a lot of figuring it out as we went i mean i had to get them on a bus um we took dr harden and miss davis and miss comley from the office just to make sure i wasn't breaking any rules doing, doing. <laughs> yeah get, get them there alive and get them back um and so we uh we dove straight in and um and did great the first year we came home with a first and a second place yeah yeah mm -hmm. we came home with we placed that year um, and had a great time and nothing crazy happened it was just a very successful trip and so I thought let's keep doing this and so we looked for more when he came on board um, we learned we about other ones so. every competition she could find we did yes that first year yes. I was here we did <laughs> five or six competitions that year it was yeah. insane we did yeah. all those you mentioned plus junior chef and it was it was a lot it was a lot how did how do competitions work like you just think okay well I'm gonna I'm really good at making lasagna I'll bring a lasagna and make a lasagna and see if you like it better. That's not how it works. How does it really work? There are tons of rules and regulations and every competition is different. Um, it can be something, in my opinion, that's a little bit low-key like Disney. Disney you think would be a big thing and it is a big thing. There's tons of people there but the requirements for the students and what you have to bring and participate with is so much less than some of the other ones. Like you kind of just show up, they provide all the equipment, they provide all the food, chef, um, coats. chef coats, hats, everything. They provide it all. So you just basically show up and it's kind of given to you. Mm -hmm. Now that's a little different because it's like a chop style competition. Right, right. So you don't know what you're cooking necessarily. They give you parameters um, and you study those parameters and then it's kind of like you pick it out of, the, out of a hat um, as opposed to something like Pro Start that it is like they literally give you the tables you work on and two butane burners and you have to bring everything else. If you've got your own Bobby Flay, you bring him with you everything, yes. and all that kind of, um, why are these competitions a big deal? Cause I mean, it's really cool. You know, at the, uh, the TV world has taken over with beat Bobby Flay and chopped and all that kind of stuff. But why is it a big deal that the kids are involved in these competitions? I think some of this for some of the students is, um, this is their chance to travel and compete. A lot of the kids in our class are not in athletics or in attache or in any other organization yeah. where they would be able to compete and travel. So a lot of these kids have found their home in culinary arts and this gives them the opportunity to do what some of the other clubs and organizations around the school are doing. So I think yeah. that is some of the buy-in. So one of the big things, and I, when I approached y'all earlier, I said, you know, I want to kind of uh, uh, talk about culinary arts and the program that you've created. Um, kind of like you would a new restaurant so you get a new restaurant it shows up to town all the buzz everybody's going to go there you have all these high sales it's going to be there because it's just new but then the new wears off and now you've you, you've become established so as we move forward into the 24 25 school year um you're getting a whole new cohort of kids right you, you've got these kids have all grown up knowing the culinary arts is awesome chef bruce is here chef phillips is cool like all that kind of stuff 
but you've you've got to to move it to where it's sustainable and it continues that elite status. What what kind of, of, of ideas do you have planned as you move forward with that? Well, I think what I love about teaching culinary arts is you can change it and make it fresh every year. You can yeah. teach eggs one year and do eggs benedict and then the next year switch to something else. You can do crepes or souffles. And so each year you can really mm-hmm. switch it up what you're cooking and you can elevate that a little more and, and learn from from the previous year. Yeah, I think that's that's a huge piece. I feel like every year we're adding to it. Like I teach year ones and it's a lot of policies and procedures and it's kind of sometimes going to be a little monotonous because we're more in the classroom than in the kitchen. But like this past year, um, a big thing that I try to do is help them write resumes and get them ready for jobs. And this past year I added job interviews and we got a bunch of the teachers to come down and actually interview the students and that really livened things up. And so I think I agree with Chef Bruce, just finding new recipes, finding the next TikTok trend and like in, incorporating that into your actual curriculum. Like we're going to do fruit gummies this year and we're going to play with different thickeners like agar agar and stuff in the basics level one course. And, you know, you hear the second years, we never did that. And they get all huffy. And I'm like, yep, we're growing and we're getting better every year. And they and they, they see that and appreciate that. Well, and it challenges us, too, because we've never played with agar agar. No. So we're going to play with this <laughs> new ingredient that you see on Food Network all the time. Yep. And so it challenges us to step outside our, our comfort zone yeah. and be challenged to, hey, let's try this new thing and, and, and fail. They see us fail oh, yeah, all, all the, the time. time. And so that's a good life lesson to teach them is, yeah. hey, let's start over and try again. So. And I, th- I think a big piece of it, too, is that, I don't know, it's something about food, but I really feel like it's a way to connect with individuals. Yeah. And so I think that, that this is a unique program where we're able to break bread with, with kids and really get to know them. And I think that's something we're both passionate about is not just teaching the curriculum, it's teaching to the student and knowing their needs and meeting those needs, whatever it is. So so three of the things that I love, uh, and y'all have talked about two of them already, those building relationships um, and then getting to explore things with the students. But the third thing is, um, which y'all, y'all did a few years ago, um, most CTE programs are two-year programs, but y'all came in and said, we see a need. Let's add a third-year program. What is the third? Is it just more cooking? What is the third-year internship program? So the third year program came about because I had these students who didn't want to leave. They, they were juniors in year two and they loved culinary and several of them were thinking about culinary school. So to be able to hang on to them and help mentor them and grow them in leadership, um, we started this program and that's what the year three program really is, is um, giving them ownership of tasks where they can lead the younger students, they can mentor them, they can learn under us about management, um, really taking a task and you know, elevating it more. It gives them opportunity to be leaders and teachers themselves. Like right now, I have a class and we got our interns over there teaching my curriculum to them. And so it's giving them an opportunity to get out of their comfort zones in a different way, not just behind a line, but managing people, com- communicating and mentoring the younger kids that are coming in. So it gives them an opportunity to be leaders in a lot of ways. Why do you like your job? <laughs> oh, so many reasons. Um, I love this school district. It's amazing. Yes. Um, we have incredible administration that lets us do this. Supports you know, us. Yeah. That supports us 100%. Um, mm-hmm. The community supports us. Yes. Uh, we get great feedback all the time, but mostly the students. I just have fun in here every day. I've never had a job where on Sunday night, in fact, I told my husband this last night, <laughs> I said, I can't wait to get to school in the morning. I've never had a job where on Sunday night, I thought that. Every Sunday night was that pit of the stomach feeling of, have to do I got to go to school. Cool. I got to go to uh, work tomorrow. And so to know that I get to come in here and have this amazing experience here. So I would totally agree with all that. I feel like mm-hmm. this um, this district, is it's a, it's a hidden gem in a lot of ways. And I've worked in different districts. I've worked in lots of different states. And to feel the support of not just our like direct administration, but the superintendent, the local communities. Like we, we did a banquet last year and you wouldn't believe the restaurants that donated food to our to our program. Um, the chef mentors that come in and, and see what we're doing and wanna be mm-hmm. part of that. Um, that's not everywhere. That's not everywhere at all. And so just knowing that we're supported, um, having someone that is like-minded in so many ways and you know, we're not butting heads, we're, we're kind of honing each other. Iron sharpens iron and it's a lot of like, we're growing together and neither one of us think we're, we're, we've arrived. And, and I think that humility and that, I don't know, just the passion, like we, we want to be here. We, we love the kids. I would completely agree to the caliper of student that we get here. Um, there's a vetting process to get into CTE here at Clinton. And that's not like, that's not like that everywhere. And so the kids have to perform a certain way before they're even allowed in the program. And so they want to be here. 
And I think that's, you can do so much more with a student if they actually have passion for what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just like you have to do history because you need it to graduate. Like this is something they're choosing and they're passionate about. They may not be the next Iron Chef or even in a restaurant, but they want to be here and they want to learn these skills either for themselves, for their family, um, to make money while they're going to be to pursue a career in being a doctor. Like they, they see the importance of this career for them in this moment even. And I think that's, it, it gets me fired up because mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's awesome to feel supported, to feel loved and to just really enjoy what you do. Like it's awesome.